I've got an old card table and it is in rough shape. What we're going to do is get rid of all the paper and everything on the front and get rid of that finish. We want to get down to the bare wood. Next, I'm going to go to pallets. Yes, we are going to get some pallet wood, but watch what we do. We're going to cut it down the strips and then we're going to pull them out. It's easier to do it that way and all we got to do is take off the nails. Just pound the nails on the back side. Once you get them all the way over, just go ahead and take your claw hammer and pull it on out. You can get rid of that nail. We don't need that anymore. Next, I will admit, I kind of cheated on this. I went ahead and had a planer. That way I could get a flat side on one side of the boards. You can use a sander. It's just a little bit faster and it's easier to do it this way, especially with all the boards I got to cut. Next, we're going to take that table and we're going to find the middle. We're going to draw a line all the way down because that gives us a guide as we're placing the wood to make sure we're going in the right direction. First thing I did was make a little triangle. This is our starter piece. I'm going to take some wood glue and put it all the way on the back. The thing is, wood glue is stronger than you think. Go ahead and cover the whole back, and I marked and flipped it over. Again, like I said, this is the starter piece, so I'm going to clamp it down so it gets a good hold. Next, I'm going to take an old rough piece, turn it over, and glue down the sanded side. We want that rough looking side to face up, and here's the reason. I'm going for an old rustic look. So once I get this cut, I'm going to line it up. Now it's going to hang over the side of the table. Don't worry about that now. What we do want to line up is the joints on the top. See how those are lined up? And then I'm going to alternate some of the sanded side with the old rustic side. And we're going with different size pieces of wood. If you notice, this one's a little smaller, but it's really nice. It's got some gray in it, so I like that look. We're going to keep alternating all the way down the table and putting on pieces as we go. Once we get to the very end, we're going to put that last piece on and cover the corner. Next, we're going to take our saw and square up the sides. I used a guide to go ahead and use it on my saw. I want square sides all the way down. Once those sides are squared up, I'm going to put some trim pieces on. I use new wood for this instead of the old rustic stuff just to give it a nice look. I'm going to brad nail those in and glue them and give it a nice trim on the sides. These are about three and a half inches wide. Once it's all glued up and dry, I'm going to use some clear polyurethane. Now, I went with a semi-gloss on this, but you can go with just a satin if you want. It looks a little messy, but trust me, you can't go wrong with polyurethane. Just put it on four coats. Once we get it all set up, look at this beautiful table. And the great thing is, not only is it beautiful, but it still folds up. That way I can fold it away and bring it out when guests arrive. It can be an extra place setting or a dessert table. I think it turned out absolutely amazing. And the great thing about it is I took old pallets that were free, an old table that was free, and just a labor of love to turn it into this beautiful work of art. I hope you like this new upcycle pallet table as much as I do. I've got an old folding table that needs to be resurfaced. And I was inspired by Lindsay from RepurposeAndUpcycle.com. As you can see, it's full of stains and paint from all the stuff that I used to do on it. First thing we've got to do is get it cleaned up. We don't want any dust or any imperfections on it. Just wipe it off, make sure it's dry. Next, we need some liquid wood. Retikit makes a perfect product for this. Once you do get it, make sure you get it stirred. If there's any settling, we want it mixed in. And it's just like paint. We're just going to go ahead and start painting away. Now, we want to make sure we cover every square inch of the table. You also don't need to put on too thick of a coat, but we don't want too thin. We just want to make sure it's covered. Use a regular brush and just put it on. Make sure it's a good quality brush though. We don't want to lose any bristles. As you can see, I'm just covering every bit of this table that I can. Long strokes back and forth. Now, this is not like painting a wall where you just got to make it perfect. This stuff goes on good. Just put it on. Make sure you again, like I said, cover every bit and don't forget those sides. We want to make sure everything is covered. Now, here's the first coat. I know it doesn't look that good, but don't worry. You can put a second coat if you want, but I'm going to show you the magic of this. We're going to go ahead and put that second coat on because this is the one we're going to work with. Now, on the second coat, I did put it a little thicker than I did with the first one. Make sure that it dries two hours in between. Now, this right here is called a graining tool. It is absolutely perfect for what we're going to do. It's going to give that table a good old-fashioned wood look. Now, using a rocking motion, you're going to take that graining tool and go back and forth. Look at those grains come through. It actually looks like an old wood table. Now, there's actually no wrong way to do this. Just keep going back and forth 
and rocking the graining tool as you go. Just start on one end of the table and go all the way to the other. And it's super easy to clean off after you're done. If there is any imperfections just like this, no worries. Before it dries, go ahead and take that paint and put it right back on. You can actually go over the grain that you've already done. Because once you get that paint on, using a rocking motion again, use your graining tool and it just takes care of that. Now, once it's dried for about two hours, look at those grains come through. But we're not done yet. It's time to stain. I like to go with a darker stain than normal because look at that. Again, like I've said before, you can already see that wood grain coming right through. Now, I am putting it on a little thick. I typically do that with my stain, but that's okay because once we get it on, take a lint-free cloth and you're going to take it right off. What's going to happen is this stain is going to stick to those grains and it's going to make it look really good. So get it all off. And once you do that, it's time we got to protect the stain. We're going to use a water-based polyurethane. Now it goes on a milky color, but don't worry. Once it dries, it is crystal clear. So just go ahead and put it all over. If you need to put a second coat, you can. This table looks amazing. All the stain colors are completely gone and it looks like a brand new faux wood table. I hope this inspired you to refinish your old tables to make them look like a new wood stained table. For this project, we're gonna grab us an old palette. We need to cut a section of the palette out, but we gotta be careful we don't cut where there's any nails or screws. For these cuts, we gotta use one of our saws. This is a skill saw and makes good straight cuts. What we need to do is look at the side of the palette, make sure we measure we have the same overhang. It's two inches, so we're gonna mark it on one side. We're gonna take it over to the other side and mark the same two inches. Let's go ahead and grab a board and make a nice straight edge. This is gonna be the line we cut on. Using the skill saw for this one, because it cuts straight, we're gonna go right down the line. Don't forget to use some eye and ear protection anytime you're using a saw. Once we get it all the way cut through, we want to make sure that we get our area nice and clean, but we got to separate these units and we've got to turn them over. We've got four more boards on the back side to cut. So we're going to use the same two inches, mark a straight line again, just matching with the one underneath. And this one, let's use a jigsaw. I want to demonstrate both different types of cutting tools. This jigsaw is easy for small projects and it goes right through. Go ahead and separate it, but don't throw it away. We'll need those boards. Take the section that we cut and we need to find the middle. That is how we're gonna get our two ends perfectly aligned. Then we use a jigsaw, get it cut through and separate those. These are gonna be our sides. Now what we gotta do is take that part that we cut off earlier and separate it and remove some of the boards with the nails in them. They're very easy to do. I can just pull up on them and they come right off. Now you've got some nails in there though. We need to remove those. It's easy to do. Just go ahead and grab a hammer and you're just gonna start tapping on the back side of the nail. Just keep going. Eventually it's gonna give and push right through. Do that with both of the nails. Some of them might have three on them. Once you get them pushed through, grab the back of that hammer, which is called the claw, and give it a yank. You're gonna pull that nail right out. Easy squeezy, not a problem. Save those boards and we're going to place them across the top of the two pieces we cut. Just go ahead and line them up and as you can see, I alternated the boards with the nails so they're not all lined up together. This one took different boards, put it all on there, then I used a nail gun just to put it in place. You can use a screw if you want, but this one worked perfectly with a nail gun. I just lined them all up, get them nice, perfectly straight after putting the first and last board in, and then just use one and a half inch little nails, put them right in, and it makes a wonderful top for our furniture. This thing is gonna be so strong, it doesn't take much to hold it together. And also because it's home talk, we've gotta make something really nice and neat for this. So take a little bit extra, the boards that we have left over, and we're gonna build a little bit of a shelf and that's going to be for our bottom. Just line these little nine inch boards up all along again using the same nail gun that we have and we're going to put it all together. This one is easy to do. I measured it just nice for the bottom 
and look at this it slides right in we're not going to secure it because it's time to show you this final project this is great for outdoor it looks rustic and it's great for cooking s'mores and making some hot chocolate especially with that sliding shelf I hope you guys enjoyed this project as much as I did making it. I hope this inspired you to build your own pallet or scrap wood furniture. Thanks for watching Home Talk, and we'll see you next time.